How can you get the information out of the arcs about MH370's final track? The thing to do is to treat them very gently and not input any headings or speeds. Instead of viewing them as lines on a globe, if we view them instead as lines on a graph of X and Y, we should be able to make very good progress. Each of these lines is an equation of X and Y. If you have three unknowns, let's say A, B and C, you would need three equations or lines to find what they are. In this case, we'd like to find out the heading of the aircraft, we'd like to find out the speed of the aircraft, and we'd also like to find out where this was taking place. That seems to be three unknowns. So that must mean that if we took three lines, we may be able to, or arcs, we could find the information. But we have to choose lines which allow us to do this as the track that the aircraft flew. We have to assume that the heading is constant and the speed is constant for the three lines that we're going to choose. So I'm going to choose the most reliable lines where I don't think any turns would be taking place. So the seventh arc is this one. Turns were probably taking place towards the end of the flight as it ran out of fuel. So I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to use the previous three. I'm just going to use six, five, and four. The spacing of these is one hour between four and five, one hour thirty, between 5 and 6. If it's on a constant speed and heading it means that the distance it travels in that first hour times by one and a half will be the distance it travels in the second period to get to the sixth arc. If it was one hour and then one hour it would be much easier. It would just travel the same distance in the first hour as in the second hour. But in actual fact, we don't have an arc there. We have the arc at 130. So we're going to have to have a ratio of 1 to 1.5. One OK, so let's go to the real chart and start drawing lines. First problem is that we don't know anywhere on any line. Here's the fourth arc at 21.41. Fifth arc, 22.41. Sixth arc, 0, 0, 1, 1. Because I don't know anywhere on any line, I'm just going to start just by drawing lines randomly in an attempt to find the ratio line of one to one and a half. So if it passes this point here, which I don't think it did, but I'm just going to mark it as being a good place to start, let's see how we get on. Okay, so. If I measure, let's say, 60 for the first leg, so if I rotate the ruler round to measure 60, the second leg would have to be one and a half times that. It would be 90 for the second leg. So if I draw 60 and then stop at 90 more, 90 more would be at 150. Well, you can see that that is no good. It stops short of the sixth arc. So it didn't do that. If it crossed this point, it did not do that. Okay, what about something else? Let's try another, uh, let's try from here, same point of course, uh, 80. 80 for the first leg and it carries on. If it carries on at the same speed, it will pass another 120 millimeters, which will take it up to 200, which is there. Also, no good. Didn't make it to the sixth arc. So I'm going to keep on doing this until I find the right spot. And in this case, I know what it is because I did it earlier. It's actually something like 120, 
half as much again on 120 is 180. So 120 for the first leg. I need 180 for the second leg, which brings me down to 300. And exactly right. There we go. So that is the only line where the aircraft could possibly have gone if it crossed that point there. So I could forget about these, I could get rid of those. Well, I don't think it passed that point. So I'm going to start to use some do some other points. Do the same trick. Try to find a line which is in the correct ratio as it passes both these arcs. I did this earlier and I saved time by doing right to drawing it on. So you see his first leg is a hundred. First leg is a hundred, the second leg has to be hundred and fifty. So that would take us down to two fifty. Exactly right. Two fifty. If the aircraft got to the fourth arc here, it could only have done this line. I'm going to do one more here, which is not round figures. It's 114 and a half, 115, 114 and a half, 115, 114 and a half, and 172. Which comes to 286. Again, same thing. If the aircraft passed this position here, it only did this line. Okay, so I've got an infinite number of lines here. I could keep on doing this, but I've got to find one line that is better than all the others. I haven't got enough information here. These are all equally good. Well, I could work out and input one more piece of information. So we measured these lines and each of these lines represents a distance on the Earth's surface and it represents one hour. So it's the speed is given by the length of this line. And this line is 541 nautical miles long, that one. So that means it's 541 knots because that's an hour, one hour from fourth to fifth arc. Speeds for these other lines are slightly different. There's a bit less for this one. 491, quite a lot less, and this one, 428, a lot less again. So all these represent different speeds. So if the aircraft crossed the fourth arc at this point, the only thing it did is to travel down this line at 541 knots, likewise for these other ones. So what's the new piece of information I'm going to input? Well, the new piece of information is that the aircraft had to actually physically get here from where we know it left the radar and turned south. So the long and the short of it is that it turned south about 1836. 1836 from 2141 is three hours and five minutes. The aircraft has three hours and five minutes to get to that point to then fly that line, and likewise to all these to these other points. But this point is a lot further away than this point, so we're going to find that the speed required to get to here is much less than here. So I measured those distances, and the speed required to get to this point is 443 knots. We would try and fly at 443 knots from an OCO get to this point, slow down, uh, speed up to 541 and fly that line. This one is a little bit further away and it needs 485 knots to get there to fly that line. And this one is further away still, would require 601 knots for 3 hours and 5 minutes to get here to fly that line. Okay, so these speeds are decreasing as we go this way these speeds are increasing as we go this way so somewhere there's a crossover somewhere there's a line of constant speed that's much more interesting than the other lines 
So where is that line? Well, we can see the 491 was I chose it because I thought that was a reasonable speed for a 777. 491, 485. So the actual uh, constant speed line is a little bit to the west and it actually comes out as 488. So 488 knot line is the constant speed line. So 488 knots is just, just a little smidgen off here. Okay, so the next next task was to find where, what sort of heading change is it from Anoko to get down to this point to fly this constant speed line, the 488. So I had to go onto uh, Google Earth and I drew in a red line. The red line is the constant speed line. That's the 488 line there. Here's the sixth arc. Let's get rid of that. Fifth arc, fourth arc. So there's the line that we've just drawn, the 488. So now I'm going to try and find out where it goes. And to do that, I'm going to draw a line over the top of it like this and find out what the heading of that is okay so that's about nine nine point four eight it's just parallel to it slightly nine point two six degrees nine point two six degrees and now I'm gonna just find out where it goes to generally speaking does it point at uh, India does it point at Jakarta four point Sorry, 9.5 thereabouts, 9.5, 9.5, just going to change this across, 9.5, 9.53, 9.53 goes within 20 miles, 20 nautical miles of a NOCO. This was my eureka moment. The line, the constant speed line here points directly over 1500 miles of ocean to Anoko and in actual fact how it's the total distance from the sixth arc to there is 2722 miles is a straight line and 488 knots is the cruising speed of a triple seven